Just in time for primary season, Donald Trump is back. Facebook, Meta, has lifted the suspension of former President Trump, and Donald Trump has issued a statement. Now, as per the statement released by Facebook, they're lying. They're saying that they banned Donald Trump for two years because he praised violent groups. That's not true. Now, Trump issued some statements that probably were, eh, but he didn't praise anybody. He said, go home with love and peace. He did not in any way praise violence. In fact, several times, particularly on Twitter, he said, stop. We are the party of law and order. But this is the gaslighting because now here's how it works. Facebook releases a statement saying we banned Trump for this reason. The media then says Facebook says they banned Trump for this reason. People then say, yeah, Trump got banned for praising violent groups. That's how it works. I've talked about this with people internally. You got to understand how the framing of media works and how it pertains to someone like Trump. Let's say you're a uh, coffee shop. And let's say that uh, there's some activist, a right wing guy waving a flag, and he's wearing a T-shirt of your coffee shop. All of a sudden, you get Antifa screaming at you, coffee shop owner, for supporting this guy. And you're like, I have no idea what's going on. You see, here's the tactic. Harass the completely unrelated third party business. Third party business then comes out and says, over the course of the past two days, we have been inundated with complaints and phone calls claiming that we support a white supremacist. We do not. We condemn white supremacy. We are not affiliated with this individual. Up, up, up. You see what happened there. This is what they do. This could be like a gun rights activist. The left will accuse of being a white supremacist. The coffee shop has no idea who this guy is. So they say, we do not support white supremacy or this guy. The media then reports coffee shop says they do not support blank so-and-so comma a white supremacist. Then other outlets say so-and-so who was reported as a white supremacist. That's the game they play. That's how they launder information and gaslight you. Well, here's the story from Fox News. And then I want to show you the lies and manipulations from Facebook. But I want to give a shout out to The Atlantic. Trump and Facebook's mutual decay. Charlie Warzel writes, at least the platform finally added a user. OK, I got to admit, that's a good one. Facebook's collapsing and I really don't care. Now, the one reason I probably would be, you know, kind of concerned that Facebook is collapsing is because TikTok is rising up in its place and TikTok's a whole lot worse. And uh, maybe they'll ban TikTok in this country. We'll see. I don't know. Here's a story from Fox News. They report. Former President Trump took to social media Wednesday afternoon to chide Facebook and parent company Meta for banning him in the first place. Following their announcement, he would be reinstated to the platform after his two year ban. Quote, Facebook, which has lost billions of dollars in value since deplatforming your favorite president, me, has just announced they are reinstating my account. He wrote shortly after 4 p.m. Such a thing should never again happen to a sitting president or anybody else who is not deserving of retribution. Now, what does that last part mean, Trump? In his post, the former president also thanked Truth Social, his own platform, for doing an incredible job for having him uh, and for their recent success. Meta, who also owns and operates Instagram, announced Wednesday via a blog post that it would be ending Trump's suspicion on both social media platforms in the coming weeks. Nick Clegg, President of Global Affairs at Meta said the company determined to the company determined Trump is no longer a serious risk to public safety and they had guardrails in place for his return. Okay, let's read about what Facebook said, because uh, I couldn't help but notice the lies. Meta says, you know, it's about fb.com. They call themselves Meta. It's so cheesy. Ending suspension of Trump's accounts with new guardrails to deter repeat repeat offenses. Okay, all right. Social media is rooted in the belief that open debate and the free flow of ideas are important values, especially at a time when they are under threat in many places around the world. That's a lie. You're a liar. Who wrote this? Nick Clegg, you are evil. You are an evil human being. You are a cog in a machine that is a generator of evil. I'll say it again. On January 6, 2020, I'm sorry, 2021, I covered what was going on at the Capitol. I did not praise. In fact, I was critical of. We went on Timcast IRL that night and said, look, man, you can't be doing this stuff. This 
It's not the 1600s. Standing in a building doesn't give you political power. The whole show condemning. Facebook booted me from the monetization program on Facebook for covering the news. You despicable, evil people. It's about the free flow of ideas. No, it isn't. It's about shutting down anyone who disagrees with you, you psychotic cultist. But let's keep reading. As a general rule, we don't want to get in the way of open public and democratic debate on Meta's platform, which means also shutting down news outlets and organizations you don't like, especially in the context of elections in democratic societies like the U.S. The public should be able to hear what the, you know, you know blah, 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 right? Blah, 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 blah. Does anyone actually believe this PR garbage? I remember, and you may have heard me talk about this Deepwater Horizon, oil spill, you know, leak or whatever. Do you really believe these people when they come out and they're like, you know, we're really sorry that this happened? No, they're not. They don't care. Some disaster will happen. A PR person comes out and lies to you. Karine Jean-Pierre comes out and she lies to you. Jen Psaki comes out and she lies to you. And I'm not going to give any special treatment to Spicer or any of the other press secretaries except Kaylee McEnany, who was constantly calling out the liars in the mainstream media. But listen, I don't mean to disparage the noble profession of PR, but that's all it is. Spin PR, damage control, as if any of the press secretaries, any of them, Republican or otherwise, Democrat or otherwise, could actually tell you what the president is thinking. Don't waste my time. Now, of course, some people are more guilty than others, and we all understand that. But please understand, it's all PR. He writes, two years ago, we took action in what were extreme and highly unusual circumstances. We indefinitely suspended then U.S. President Trump's Facebook and Instagram following his praise for people engaged in violence at the Capitol on January 6. We then referred that decision to the Oversight Board, an expert body, to establish an independent check and balance on our decision making. The board upheld the decision but criticized the open-ended nature of the suspension, blah, 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 blah. We appointed an independent board of all of our friends to agree with us, is what they said. My friends, I take you back in time. Oversightboard.com. Let's actually read why Donald Trump was suspended. About the case. At 4.21 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as the riot continued, Trump posted a video on Facebook and Instagram saying, I know your pain. I know your hurt. We had an election that was stolen from us. It was a landslide election, and everyone knows it, especially the other side. But you have to go home now. We have to have peace. We have to have law and order. We have to respect our great people in law and order. We don't want anybody hurt. It's a very tough period of time. There's never been a time like this where such a thing has happened, where they could take it away from us, from me, from you, the country. This was a fraudulent election, but we can't play into the hands of these people. We have to have peace. So go home. We love you. You're very special. You've seen what happens. You've seen the way others are treated that are so bad and so evil. I know how you feel, but go home and go home in peace. Praise. Why? Because he says you're special. Now, of course, y'all know my opinion on the 2020 election. At the time, and please understand this context, this is what frustrates me to no end about the whole election narrative. The fraud narrative was about Dominion voting machines, servers in Germany, Chinese fake ballots, Donald Trump's secret conspiracy amongst his cohorts to watermark ballots and things like that. It was not a narrative about ballot harvesting. And so when I came out and said, guys, that sounds nuts. That's not true. People were like, you're a shill, you're a corporate, you're CIA, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, I really don't think that China had fake ballots, blah, blah. Now, if you tell me that there were procedural issues and that's your argument, oh, OK, I get it. But Trump's whole thing, when he came out and said fraudulent, geez, that's the problem. That's not the case. It was Let's just, you know, because people have said it was rigged, it was stolen, and it really, you, you have to really define what you mean. Because, and I will stress, when this happened, I had people coming to me being like, on March 3rd, Donald Trump will be reinstated under the real law because Trump prepared. Do you remember all of that? And people came out and said, I was wrong for telling you, no, this isn't true. Trump lost. These things aren't real. Later on, Time Magazine ran an article about the shadow campaign. Then the narrative started shifting. 
Now I have people saying, finally coming around to our way of thinking, eh, Tim? I'm like, bro, I have said it was a procedural change the whole time. Ballot harvesting, COVID lockdowns, Trump. People are like, how could Biden get the votes? Look, man, people were locked, locked down, couldn't leave their houses. Sports were taken away from them. They couldn't go to the movies. They couldn't go out to eat. Many of them lost their jobs. Their restaurants were closed. Their savings were gone. They're, they were going negative in their bank accounts. And the media just went Trump nonstop the whole time. That's how. Not to mention universal mail-in voting, not to mention ballot harvesting. So if Trump wants to give his opinion on that, fine, fine. But please, all I'm trying to say is the context back then when Trump was saying fraud is very, very different from what people are saying now. So don't get mad at me. Disagree with me all you want. Fine. No problem. But anyway, I digress. I hate going off on that on that subject. I want to point out Trump said what? He said, we love you. You're very special. Oh, well, that's praise. There for, oh, come on. He's de-escalating. He's saying, stop, go home. We don't want anybody hurt. We need law and order. That was a perma ban. He later said at 6 uh, uh, Eastern time, as police were screening the Capitol, Trump said there are things and events that happen when a sacred landslide election victory is so unceremoniously, viciously stripped away from great patriots who have been badly, unfairly treated for so long. Go home in love and peace. And this is their their argument. Donald Trump telling his his fans, of which there are, what, 70 some odd million, 74, 75 million to stop. Don't be violent and go home is not praise for violent activities. But they needed that justification. That's what they needed. Let me let me show you Donald Trump's Facebook page. January 6th, what did he post? I am asking for everyone at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful. No violence. Remember, we are the party of law and order. Respect the law and our great men and women in blue. Thank you. You ain't going to gaslight me into believing he said anything otherwise. I read his quotes. Please support our Capitol Police and law enforcement. They are truly on the side of our country. Stay peaceful. It's fascinating, isn't it? Trump saying, please, please be peaceful. Respect the police. Defend the police. And then Facebook comes out and says, actually, he was praising the other side. He was praising the people who are violent. What? Dude literally posted support our police. It was the other group of people. They're lying. That's why I say this guy, Nick Clegg, is an evil human being. These are the kind of people like Peter Strzok. They sit there with their smarmy smile and they say, ooh, I will lie and do anything to destroy and burn this country to the ground because I deserve it. It's my turn. They are either spineless, complicit, or the banality of evil. But you don't get good out of any of it. Spineless people. Maybe maybe he's a spineless guy. And he's sitting there going like, well, I know what I'm doing is wrong, but I better just do it anyway or else. I just can't stand the cowardice, man. The suspension was an extraordinary decision taken in extraordinary circumstance. The normal state of affairs is that the public should be able to hear from a former president of the United States and a declared candidate for that office again on our platforms. Now that the time period of the suspension has elapsed, the question is not whether we choose to reinstate Trump's account, but whether there remain such extraordinary circumstances that extending the suspension beyond the original two year period is justified. To assess whether the risk to public safety that existed in January 2021 has sufficiently receded, we have evaluated the current environment regarding to our crisis policy protocol, which included looking at the conduct of the U.S. 2022 midterm elections and expert assessments on the current security environment. Our determination is that the risk has sufficiently receded and that we should therefore adhere to the two year timelines we set out. As such, we will be reinstating Mr. Trump's Facebook and Instagram accounts in the coming weeks. However, we are doing so with new guardrails in place to deter repeat offenses. What is that? What are the new guardrails? The public should be able to hear what a politician has to say, blah, blah, blah. Our updated protocol also addresses content as wait, wait. like any other Facebook or Instagram user. Trump is subject to our community standards. In light of his violations, he now also faces heightened penalties for repeat offenses. Penalties which apply to other public figures whose accounts are reinstated from suspension, blah, blah, blah. In the event Trump posts further violating content, the content will be removed and he will be suspended for between one month and two years, depending on the severity of the violation. You see what they're trying to do? Here's the challenge. Trump needs to be on Twitter and Facebook, but they're basically saying, come on, Trump, come on to Facebook, rally all your supporters, and then we will beat you over the head with a stick to make sure you don't say anything we don't like. Why would Trump do it? Well, I got to tell you, Trump does need to be on these platforms. It doesn't mean he needs to post anything. 
or, or I doesn't need to, I'm sorry, everything, but he does need to post something. So if he wants to be spicy, he can do it on Truth Social. If he wants to speak generally, he can do it on Facebook. This is what we do with YouTube and Rumble or YouTube and TimCast.com. We put all our video content up on Rumble. Maybe you're watching on Rumble right now. We have the members only uncensored show, as I like to call it the speakeasy, over at TimCast.com. YouTube says we don't like certain conversations. I say, okay, we'll put them on TimCast.com instead. Now, to be fair, I honestly don't believe that any of the conversations we've had at TimCast.com uncensored would be banned on YouTube. But this is the important point. I will stress it again. If you go and watch members only content on TimCast.com, you're not going to hear things that would make you barf or shock you to your core. Oh, actually, you might barf on some of the stories. What I mean is we probably could do any one of these segments on YouTube. We swear a lot. We're not so family friendly. And at most, we probably get demonetized for the segment, but none of it's bannable. We don't do anything that I think YouTube would ban us for. But the issue is I'm not going to play games. YouTube loses access to these conversations because they threaten us with termination. And what that means is the conversation and the market will split. We can put tons of content up on Rumble. In fact, at one episode of the Uncensored per week goes up on Spotify and Apple. Because we don't think it's violative of any of these, these policies. We just don't trust YouTube. YouTube is the kind of organization that will make up a fake reason to give you a strike. So we don't trust them. Now, of course, people are saying, why use Facebook? It's a tough question. Why should Trump be on, uh, why, I'm sorry, YouTube. Why should Trump be on Facebook? Why are we on Facebook and YouTube? It's the central battlefield. Less so with Facebook. You know, Facebook's an aging population. That's why that joke is funny. At least they added a user. But YouTube is the biggest social media platform among Gen Z. I, I cannot cede that territory. And I got, I got to be honest, people are like, why not just go to Rumble and do whatever? It's like, dude, here are my options. One, quit and be rich for the rest of my life. Buy property, open some hot dog stands and not have to think twice. I'm not interested in that. I could Airbnb something or just rent properties. out. No, no, I don't do any of that stuff. Two, I can go nuclear. I can just say, I'll say whatever I want. And then the foundation crumbles around me. And I end up just making content on Rumble to a much, much smaller audience that doesn't generate enough revenue to actually reach larger crowds. And, you know, I'd probably make a really good living and I'd probably be very happy. And three, purposefully migrate over to Rumble seed the territory that is YouTube, Facebook, etc., Spotify, Apple, talk about any and everything, make substantially less money, have less risk, not worry about death threats. Oh, it's the same thing that would happen if I get banned. So it's not, it's not easy, but I'll put it this way. There are rebels inside the box and outside the box. Many people said the Daily Wire is trying to be rebels inside the box. I think the Daily Wire serves a very important purpose in the culture war, and it's good that they're doing what they're doing. We need to push back from within the battlefield and then, (coughs) excuse me, set up the speakeasy over at TimCast.com, where you can then come hang out and get access to other individuals. But more importantly, on TimCast IRL, we have Steve Bannon. He's banned. We have Alex Jones. He's banned. It is a corridor. It is an opportunity for you to explore and try and hear more things. It's not perfect. We're not perfect. We try what we, we, we try our best, but this is the challenge. And it's why Trump needs to be on Facebook as well. Trump can go on Facebook. He can say everything he needs to say about his policies that don't break the rules and then say whatever he wants on truth social that may break the rules. Facebook then loses access to premium top tier content and the most relevant content. YouTube does the same. So be it. And maybe that is what's going to cause them to eventually collapse. But it is still a large space. Now, the big, the big place right now is TikTok for, for young people. We're banned from TikTok. No joke. Tim Cast IRL got banned for no reason. They did not allow our conversations to be had. We didn't break any rules. No, no kidding. We broke no rules. They just said, you're gone. So you know what? If TikTok gets banned, I'll say good riddance. It is an influence operation of the Chinese Communist Party, in my opinion, and uh, is causing damage to this country and to the world. And so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too upset if they just said, we're gone. You know, or, you're gone, sorry. And they get rid of it. 
for the time being, we have to figure out the best way to communicate. And Twitter's it. Truth Social is good. The engagement is incredible. But Donald Trump needs to be on Twitter. It's the unfortunate reality. He's got to do it. He's got to get on Facebook. I don't know exactly when they're going to bring him back. These platforms are dying as well. Twitter was already dying before Elon took over. Now, without the support of the CIA, it's doing much worse. I'm half kidding, by the way, because I assume the CIA probably was providing some kind of guidance and funding. But now they're struggling. So who knows where this is all going to go? The World Economic Forum has been talking about uh, cyber 9-11 and what that'll look like. And it's going to be scary. I hope you have chickens. I hope you got out of the city. I hope you've got resources. I hope you've been prepping to a certain degree because they keep saying it. Listen to these people when they tell you what, they, what, what, what is happening. They're saying there's going to be some kind of major cyber attack. And we already saw what happened with, you know, big banks getting shut down, things like that. Ransomware can shut it all down. And that'll be scary. We all make our money off the Internet. They get all the business up on the Internet. It all gets knocked out. Everything collapses. You end up owning nothing. And you're going to be pretty damn unhappy. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.